OCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. All right, five minutes after nine o'clock. I love this segment. Jim George is here. You know, when Jim George first started out doing this radio show, we always talked about cable TV. And then we went to antenna TV. And then we went to TV. And then we went to entertainment. And, and then we went to gadgets. And now it's the whole universe. We can talk about things the Hubble telescope can see that are 160 million light years away. And that's some. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about cataracts, believe it or not. Oh, really? All right, yeah. Well, I had mine removed yesterday. Wow. Oh, you did. And you're here today. You had a cataract removed. Yeah. Wow. One yeah. eye or two? Just the one eye, the left. But it was quite an experience. I'll tell you, I uh, I was nervous. I'll be quite honest with you. And, it was, uh, and as far as painful, it was just a little bit painful because oh. I kept asking them to put some more numbing drops in. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. But you're wide awake for this thing. They're doing it right oh in front and talking gosh. to you. Hey, would you move your eye up a little bit? Would you? Oh, you got to wow. be kidding me. Oh, my gosh, Ooh, really? How terrifying. long did it take? It took about a half hour. Can I ask where you went? I went to the VA hospital in Gainesville. Ah. Oh, my gosh. There was 11 of us there at 6 in the morning because there's 11 operating rooms. Did you drive mm-hmm. yourself? <clears throat> no. You, you, my wife had to drive me. I always make sure else. you yeah. have a designated driver. Mm-hmm. So, did, so did you have a cataract? Do you have a cataract in the other eye also? No, no it's clear. So now you have 20-20 vision in the good eye and yeah. 20-20 vision, and better than 20-20 in the, the new, newly right, repaired right. eye. Yeah. Well, they asked me. They said, do you want us to put a lens in? that allows you to read or you would you rather have a lens in that allows you to see further away and i said further away because i don't want to wear glasses driving right and they did and i'm telling you what they they did that an eye check uh, you know chart wall check uh, two hours after the operation and i couldn't believe it i could see so clearly and yet i always thought i could see clearly (laughs) i always thought i could see clearly and how about colors um, I haven't done the test yet um, <clears throat> as far as um, it looks more clarity to me, but I have to get an actual test. That's amazing test. to me. So uh, of, was it laser or did they actually no, have a scalpel? No, scalpel, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And stitches. Was it a robotic scalpel or did the no, no. doctor with there his hand? Two, two doctors with, yeah. Oh, my god. So you could see the scalpel come into your You can eye. almost see the scalpel. They, oh, they, they, no. They dilated the eye and uh, no. they had the other eye covered. <laughs> and um, then you can see them. You can see blurriness as they, but you feel the pressure where they're pushing and shoving. Did they have your eye held open, like wider than yes, normal? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh Did it hurt? Gosh. Did that part hurt? No, no. Like I said, they put some numbing drops in. You look perfect. You doesn't look I, like anything's wrong at all. I know. You wow. would never know. Except the, the dilation still hasn't gone down on the left eye. So you don't wear good, glasses good. for anything? You don't wear glasses? I wear glasses to read. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Because I like the magnification, for one thing. Hmm. You, know, you get the little medicines, you can't read those bottles. Yeah. Right, no. right. Uh-uh. You can't well, the index on a, on a Ro- <laughs> Rand McNally. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Do you have to take antibiotics or something? I'm or? still taking drops. I'll take drops until the 24th, and in the 24th, they'll look at it, and if everything goes well, then next week they will take the stitches out. They're supposed to dissolve normally, but if oh. they don't dissolve, then they'll say they'll take them out. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. But it... Yeah. Wow. They monitor your blood pressure about every five minutes, and my blood pressure kept going up and up, and I kept squeezing the rail, you know, and Why they said, relax, it? relax. And I said, I can't You're relax. You're just nervous. You're just nervous, yeah. I would do You've that, got too. This, this knife in my eye. How do you expect <laughs> me to relax? How come they can't do it when you're... Like sleeping. Well, I talk to you all the time, so they, you know, they want you to turn your eye to the left, and turn uh-huh. to the right, look straight up, and you know. Uh-huh. Wow. And how you feeling now? Do you feel any pain? And and I spelt a couple of good little sharp tinges, and they'd say, okay, we'll put another drop in, and I'm. Uh huh. But. Phew. Wow. When I got out of there, I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was such, such a nervous. Holy wreck. mackerel. That's your right away, kiddo. You know, wow. But they told me what to expect, but still, it's not the same. Well, but people have had it. They're probably going to call in and say, it was a piece of cake, man. It was nothing to <laughs> well, it. Well, you're, you're almost saying that. So, sure. so did your wife watch it on the TV in another room? No. Um, 
that she did not. They kept her, in, of course, in a waiting room. The, the VA hospitals, you know, uh, very modern and such, but they're not very progressive in the sense that, you know, having a studio where you could see the operation and things uh-huh, like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow. Yeah, but wow. It's, um, it's like having a colonoscopy. So I want you... people to watch. <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't yeah, want that. Yeah, I don't that. think I will either. <clears throat> no, you don't want that. So, yeah. so did you um, almost not do it? I yes, I uh, I got cold feet towards the end because uh, the doctor I went to um, called in a second doctor for his opinion, <laughs> and they looked at the oh, uh, no. chart and said, "Okay, well, you have a cataract, and yes, you're going to see better, uh, but you know, it's not it's not something you really have to worry about." And um, uh, you know, are you sure you want to do it? Because there are those cases where, you know, there's infection and things happen and you could lose your eye. And, you know, told me all the negatives. Oh, wow. And And this was, you know, and I said to him, do you have cataracts? And he says, yes. And I said, have you had the operation? He said, no, I'm not, I'm not letting anybody cut into my eye. The doctor told that you that. That was the doctor said that. Oh, my gosh. And so he's, oh, wow. he's, he said, but if you want to have it done, it's only like, you know, one half of 1% of, you know, that ever go bad. So all I was thinking about is, am I in that one half? Yeah, but, I know, I know. You know. But wow. anyway, I had it done, and whew, what a difference. What a Wow, I'm glad you came through okay. night and day. You didn't even let us know last week that this no. was in your future. Uh-uh. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm glad I made it yesterday, because yesterday was my 73rd birthday. Oh, oh happy, happy birthday, birthday. I had the operation Jim. done on my birthday. Nice. That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. But your family was happy that yep. everything yep. came out everything okay. Everything worked out fine. Happy and it doesn't itch or anything. There's, you know, it's just uh, it doesn't water. You know, sometimes your eyes water. You know. So that means I'm older now than you were when I first met you. <laughs> well, I guess that does mean that. <laughs> Depends how you say it. <laughs> Hey, poor Galen. He comes from Atlanta where it's freezing. Yeah. In Ocala, and it's freezing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can't yeah, get yeah. a break. Yeah. You know, he can't. <laughs> and, and you've heard him. He hates cold. He hates oh. cold, yeah. 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 And, uh, and our plants hate cold. Oh, my goodness. I have plants that are all shriveled up and died. And that's fine. They'll grow back. Yeah, they'll come back. Hey, look, you know, you, you for a while you were the professor of gadgetry. <laughs> now you're the professor of the universe. Mm-hmm. But, I but see, so. this gadget to Robin's left and my right, this little heater. <clears throat> yep. I love that gadget right now. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. I meant to bring a violin here and show you a violin. Um, my wife purchased it at a garage sale or something, and she wanted to know how to string it and things like that because she wants to give it to our grandson who uh, wants to take violin lessons. So oh, okay. I, I'll, I'll make sure I bring it in let you look at it. Absolutely. You might say it's one, two, three, or throw it away. It ain't worth the, you know, the dollar <laughs> you paid for it or whatever. <laughs> E-A-D-G. E-A-D-G. That's the, those are the notes for violin. Yeah. E-A-D-G. See? There again. I've learned something. Do you know how I know that? Because it's the same notes for a mandolin. That's what Robin plays. Oh. So. But it's from the bottom up. So the E is the bottom string. Well, if you're holding it like a guitar, I guess. Hmm. In in the case of a violin, if you're left-handed. I, I guess it would be. I guess it would be if you're holding it up here. Right-handed. I guess it would be the right side would be the E here. Wow, all that information at one place. <laughs> <laughs> Larry will fix you up, Jim. Well, Bring great. Yeah, I just want to know if it's you know worth strings. you know pl- you know playing around with. But uh, mm-hmm. he's shown up. He's three years old, and he's shown up. Uh, uh, you know, a talent wow. for wanting to play the guitar and That's wanting nice. to play the piano and. And so we're going to, going to encourage him and get him a violin also. The most discouraging thing for a new player of an instrument that needs to be tuned is for the instrument to not be tuned. Because you don't realize that you're doing it right. You think you're doing it wrong, but because the instrument is out of tune. That's the one thing. And, and talking about gadgets, it's one of the things I love about like the music store. You can now get a gadget that, that he will... To absolutely help you tune the any instrument, whatever yeah. instrument it is. So. We have a piano at our house, and we keep threatening to get it tuned, but we've been in that house for 33 years and haven't tuned it yet. Oh, my. Well, that's yeah. one thing. And whenever might... we get together and the girls play the piano, you know. It sounds horrible? Well, it sounds okay, but it, it did sound better. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, that is one th- one instrument that you want a professional to tune. Yeah. You could do it yourself, but it would take a long time. Oh, no, I'm not going to touch that. All right, you ready to jump into these phone calls? <clears throat> I am. All right, good morning. Thank you for calling. You're on the air with Jim George, the professor of the universe. Okay, I'm going to tell you, cataract surgery is a piece of cake. <laughs> yeah, see? see? I told you people will call in and say it's a piece of cake. So was your I, eye totally I numb? I didn't want to let you down. <laughs> 
say, uh, Mr. George, did you notice any change in color? I, I thought I had a lot of black shirts, and they were actually blue. I am noticing more color. You know, I am totally colorblind according to the uh, the charts that you get. But they told me on the 24th they'll retest me because they have said that, uh, um, you know, the colorblindness may go away now that I've had this operation. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that'd good, be great. Good. I'm glad you had a successful surgery like I did, and uh, that's uh, wonderful, and I suggest it for everybody. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the call. What a wonderful birthday present you got to be able to see better. Yep, yep. That's, uh, that's a blessing, Jim, so much. Yep, I was... I wasn't looking forward to the operation, but I was looking forward to the operation being over. Yeah, I bet you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really was. I was very apprehensive because mm-hmm. of all that I, because other people had said the same thing. It's got, it's one, two, three. And I said, but how can it be? What? I mean, they're going to be cutting my eye with a, you know, they mm-hmm. said, don't worry about it. You won't feel a thing. Well, let me tell you, in my case, I felt a thing. You know, the, uh, the okay. people who come in here from Ocala, I have, they have one of their ladies going to Haiti. Mm-hmm. And they're going to be performing surgeries and, and procedures for the eyes on people in Haiti who have nothing, no money, nothing. Yeah. And and cataracts are like almost like a miracle in their world, mm-hmm. uh, the removal of them, I should say. Right, yes. Be- because, uh, I mean, they kind of live with the fact that they thought they were blind forever. And, and then all of a sudden they can see. Yeah. Well, this doctor that I had was very young and very nice, and he was telling me that the operation itself is maybe 10 to 15 minutes. It's all the hour prep before and, of course, the prep after where they, you know, they they keep you uh, semi-sedated in the sense that your eye is covered and it's all numb and everything. And uh, and then they would want to monitor you for a couple hours. But the actual operation, I guess you could make a mill out of it. You know, every 30 minutes you could bring another person into the operating room. Wow, and, just amazing, and, really. And do it. It's amazing what the, that yeah. that field of health can do. All right, let's go back to the phone. Good morning. You're on the air with Jim George. Uh, good morning, uh, Jim. Yes. Glad to hear your surgery went well. Yes. Uh, I'm one of the 10%, I guess. I woke up, uh, when I went in to have my cataracts done, they uh, they sedated you, and I thought I was asleep, and I woke up during the procedure, oh. and I never experienced such pain in my life. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, holy, that was really bad. I know. They kept putting drops in my eyes to numb in the eye, but I kept saying, you better put more drops in that eye. Well, yeah. well, when they did mine, they were, you know, you were more or less out of it. Oh, uh, you, were. you know, like you were sleeping or something. Yep, I asked them about that. He said, no. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, we but want then, you wide awake. Yeah, well, anyways, everything worked out okay, it I did. guess. But it did. It was uh, one heck of an experience. It was an experience. Uh, that the, the person that did my eye is no longer uh, walking the earth, so uh, I guess. You took care of him, did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he'll never do that again. Yeah. <laughs> no. But anyway, the, uh, you know, not everybody has a great experience. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like I said, I'm one of the ten percent. But it worked but out okay, other, right? And. Uh, I am basically uh, didn't retire. I became a professional patient, and I'm an example of modern medicine. Oh, I see. <laughs> I should have been gone a long time ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there was a guy in the waiting uh, area with me, and he said that the VA has literally kept him alive. He was 86 years old. His little league? Literally. Literally. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, the VA. Uh, I mean, they, they've done every kind of operation there is on this guy. And he was, you know, walking and everything, but he was in a wheelchair before. And they said, oh, okay. wow. yeah, VA is good. VA treats you good. I don't care well, what you read. Well, the only thing I can tell you is I'm a living testament to modern medicine. Yes. But, uh, you know. I guess when your number's up, your number's up, and uh, if it isn't, yeah. you're going to be here for everything. But like right. I said, I changed uh, occupations. I'm a professional patient now. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're keeping the doctors in money. We know, we know. Somebody's got to keep the doctors in golf clubs. Yes, exactly. Well, thank well, you anyway, for the call. Anyway, great hearing everything's okay, and uh, I wish I had a technical question to ask you, but uh, <laughs> no, we're fine. We're I'm fine. get myself in trouble. <laughs> Right, anyway, have a great weekend, everybody, and it was glad to hear everything is hunky-dory. All right. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Sonny. I, 
Okay, I do have a technical question. Okay. This I saved this. This was in the news the other day. All right. Now, this m might not be something that is in your realm. I don't know. But we have this story. A lawmaker in Florida has introduced a bill that, if passed, would create a legal foundation for blockchain data and smart contracts in the United States. House Bill 1357 introduces multiple stipulations that blockchain ledgers and smart contracts be treated as legally binding da methods of data storage, provided that such measures do not break any pre-existing laws or regulations. Okay, I can read the whole thing. It's like double talk to me. It is like double talk. So What is that? Blockchain to me, <clears throat> and I've had people explain it to me several times, so... I'm, I'm repeating what I've heard. I tell people a lot of times, I'm not very smart. I'm just a good parrot. <laughs> and I repeat what I hear. But um, there are servers, and these servers, just like when you see people buy and sell stocks and they happen instantane, you know, the institutions do it all. Computers, as soon as they see a, a stock price go up, you know, a half a cent, they'll buy or sell, you know. All that's going on behind the scenes. Well, the blockchain is almost the same thing where... Um, you create a, a, a coin, let's say I call it Bitcoin, and you put a value to it. And that value is less than maybe a dollar, maybe even less than 10 cents, as the story was told of a guy who used 10 Bitcoins to buy a pizza. So, and now those Bitcoins are worth, what, sixteen, nineteen thousand dollars yeah, yeah. So it, it has no real value, just like a stock does. You just create it. So then, unless, of course, the stock happens to be Procter & Gamble or somebody who's taking it public. But, I mean, if I wanted to go public tomorrow morning, what are my assets? You know, why would someone want to buy my stock? Yeah, yeah. Based on potential that I might launch an IPTV system and I might make money and I might, you know. But what if I don't? So the Bitcoin has no value. So what happened is the, the, the drug lords and a few others got a hold of this and decided that they would use Bitcoin as an exchange. So the government doesn't know who owns the Bitcoins. So they started doing a chain where they would inform everybody in, um, in like a group of people what what is going on. And then other people decided to go ahead and get computers of their own and servers and monitor the transactions. And every time a transaction took place, they would get a certain amount of cents or a certain amount of dollars contributed to them. And when it have equal a certain amount, it would equal one Bitcoin. So it's just all fantasy, like, like a game you know, going on in the hmm. background. Hmm. But it caught on to scent that now it became a, a currency. So the chain block, blockchaining is where any one event that happens is across the entire network of all computers instantaneously. Wow. And that's why the price goes up proportionately or down so instantly because it's computers talking to, to themselves, a lot of artificial intelligence going on. But the drug people can buy a Bitcoin, let's say, for uh, $10,000, and then if it's worth 15000 or even 20000 they they can you know sell their drugs or whatever to someone who pays in Bitcoins. So there's never really a transaction until you go to sell the Bitcoin. And everybody wants Bitcoins. You've seen what's happened with the stock market, right, with Bitcoin. You've... You've heard. The, I've heard it. You, yeah, I don't know that I understand it, though. <laughs> yeah, it's going like crazy. I've heard it, but yeah. I don't understand it. Well, there's two guys in Ocala. I just read an article the other day that uh, there's two guys in Ocala that are starting their own Bitcoin currency, and they're calling it something else to, you know, Crypto. Uh, want, wanting to, you know, do that with uh -huh. artificial money and such. Could we do it with Monopoly money? Could we call Monopoly money real money? Oh, there you go. Well, you see, it's not really something you hold in your hand, a Bitcoin. Someone's holding it for you. And there was a monopoly money. You could make a photocopy of it. You could, you know, get it at a... Let's oh, say so it's got to be non-reproducible or something? It, it does. There's only X number of the Bitcoins were ever... Let, let's say 10,000 Bitcoins were ever made. That's it. And it's those Bitcoins being transferred that make the value go up. They're not real coins. So how does the blockchain thing... And maybe you didn't hear the story, so forgive me if it if it's new to you but we had a story the other day about giving sexual consent on blockchain so that you don't get in trouble let's say a young man goes out with a young woman and says hey yeah you want to get nasty <laughs> and then she can write down everything that she 
doesn't want to do the nasty. Yeah, yeah. And then it goes in this blockchain. I'm okay with this, this, and this, but I don't want to do this, this, and this. You agree? I and agree. Then signs it. And then if they violate the contract, it's all recorded in a blockchain. Right. Well, there, there again, it's computers and artificial intelligence that are talking back and forth. And whether it's an exchange of um, a dollar value for a coin or if it's exchange for, let's say, a dollar value for services rendered, it's all it's all in a legal binding you know situation. I can't say I want to buy a Bitcoin for ten thousand dollars and not do it because when I say it on the computer instantaneously that ten thousand dollars is out of my account wow so somebody could wow. buy bitcoin with your money and then you're out well by like if bitcoin. somebody hacked into your oh, account oh if someone were to hack in sure they could yeah so then how do you know what businesses will accept bitcoins well right now how can you the, buy something the, 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 there's only a few of them that are that are accepting it but they're big ones you know let's say it's kmart or sears it's there's a lot of large ones you could actually really? type into your uh, computer, which corporations or which companies accept Bitcoin as legal currency, and you get it. And it's international; it's not just going on in the USA. Wow! I so, mean, Japan, all over the world. Would you ever accept it? Like, like I called you up and said, "Would you come into my house and fix my TV?" Uh, okay, but I can only pay you in Bitcoin. Would you say okay? Well, if you said Bitcoin that word, I'd probably say okay because they're like nineteen thousand dollars for one. <laughs> you know. But but you can buy a portion of the bitcoins. For for instance, if they're nineteen thousand per coin and you only have two thousand, you can buy a, a portion of, of a coin. Well, because we heard a story the other day of a young uh, children's book illustrator, and somebody wanted her to illustrate a children's book, and they were going to pay in bitcoin. And this was before bitcoin became big. And she right. said, "No, I need I can't pay my rent with that." And now she wishes she had said oh, yes. Yeah. See, there's yeah. the difference, yeah. Well, even these two guys that are in Ocala, I wish I'd say that article for you. I'll, next time it comes, it pops into my in-basket, I'll, I'll send it to you. But, uh, um, you know, they, they want to do the same thing. They want to make millions of dollars off of other people's work. In other words, you create the Bitcoin and everybody else exchanges it. You don't do anything from that point on. Mm. But you have to hype it. How do people know you have it? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like Doctor Strangelove. You know, it doesn't do any good to have a bomb that can destroy the world if nobody knows you have it. Well, I guess <laughs> in, the, in in a, in a sense, it's the same as actual coins. I mean, when the first person made the first coin and said, "Here, I'll give you this round piece of metal in exchange for that corn," that person with the corn must have said, "What am I going to do with that?" Yeah. And so it must have all started that way somehow. Had to start somewhere. Yeah. Hmm. Except you know. Um, it all started at the beginning, I guess you know, before the coins with rock, and they carved the rock. You remember the the, the Phoenicians and the uh, yeah. Peloponnesians and all. Well, they they would go to certain islands and spend months, you know, hacking a rock out and and making it round. Didn't the and, Indians use shells? And there again, shells yes. because they're hard to come by, so it had a value to it. Hmm. But our coins all started with things like silver and gold, like a gold eagle. Yeah, and then something had value. Yeah, because when the United States wanted to get away from England, then the founding fathers had to create some kind of currency. They didn't want to depend on them, so all of a sudden they're generating these coins. Yeah, there again, and England wasn't very happy about that. Nope. They, they liked the power. Yeah, but at least for them, the idea of currency was already in existence. It's uh, the idea of virtual currency is really. I guess so maybe I'm just behind the times. You know, it took me till this year to become part of the 21st century. So I understand. I'm, our, I'm, our smartphones now. So I wonder if I'll ever get Bitcoin. Some of the uh, electronics that I don't understand are automobiles. I know you ask Matt all the time, but like my wife just got a car the other day, and just to operate it, you know, you don't use a key. You yeah, my daughter is the same give way. Give me a break. Uh, I know. Oh. <laughs> you, really? What do you use? You, you just put your finger in there because the key is in, in, in this case, it's in her purse. Yeah. You know? Wow. My daughter, too. And she had to learn all these different, how to use the console. The console is one of those heads-up consoles, mm -hmm. like being in a spaceship. <laughs> but you're she's asking me. I said, car. "Don't ask me." Uh, uh, uh. Get the book. Wait till she gets. The, wait till she gets the car without the steering wheel, without the gas oh, yeah. pedal, without the brake pedal. Yeah, that'd be the. Well, day. I'm glad you're okay with yeah. with your yeah. eyes, and, yeah. and uh, thank you for sharing that with oh, us. No problem. Thank you. And happy birthday. Oh, and thank you again. Very, yep. very good. Happy birthday. All right. All right, we'll be right back. Radio, I'm Karen McHugh. A 